Praise the Lord. Good morning. Amen. Well, you're a silent bunch already. I know. It says that as I walked into the church already, many of you all have uh, registered yourself and you are seated down and you can't wait for the conference to begin. And, you know, kudos to our uh, Pastor Brian Rajan right, for organizing the National Worship Conference and uh, they've done an excellent job. I think he deserves a big hand. This morning, I'm going to speak to you on the area of prophetic worship, and I'm going to give you various ideas and concepts of what prophetic worship is all about. Um, I've been listening to a lot of music, and uh, some of the singers that I listen to are no longer around. Uh, <laughs> uh, that shows how old I am. Okay. And uh, do you mind if I do some impersonations? I'm sure you have heard of Elvis Presley, right? Yeah. Are you lonesome tonight? Are you crying in the chapel? Okay. How many of us want to see a Michael Jackson impersonation? <laughs> Gonna come next year. <laughs> Alright, yeah. Now, I've been called various names. Sometimes, you know, they put out a flyer and uh, they call me uh, Reverend Elvis Sue. So I have to correct that. Correct that. I'm not Elvis you, I'm Eris you. And uh, especially for now, the Greater Bethlehem, this is news to you. I've never heard it before. Actually, I'm taking over your pastor's church. <laughs> they have printed my name there in the National Worship Conference, Reverend Arif Siu. <laughs> so I'm coming over, I'm following your back. <laughs> it's so good to um, uh, meet up uh, with uh, the real Reverend Arif Muti. And then the chat with him uh, earlier on before the meeting began. Uh, it's a man of God and I believe that he has a heart for his nation and as well as the nation of Malaysia because, you know, he comes over here almost every year. But I'm going to talk to you about prophetic worship. And in this subject of prophetic worship, it may sound a little bit spiritual, it may sound a little bit above, but the whole idea of what prophetic worship is this, it is delivering God's message through Melody. Okay, it's delivering the message of God to melody. There are prof prophecies whereby most of the prophecies are spoken. I would say probably 95% of all prophecies or even higher are actually spoken. And a small percentage of it is delivered through songs, through melody or through an instrumental. Now, prophetic worship is basically understanding what God is saying and then interpreting it through a song or through a melody. It can be done, you know, after a meeting, you've attended a great conference, you've heard something that has um, struck your heart, you were so impacted about it, that immediately, you know, there is a song that rises up inside of you, and you go back home and you write it down. Now that is also a prophetic song. Okay? Or you see something that's happening in your nation, and now you have a message to share and a melody comes along and you record it and you get your cell group to sing, you get your church to sing and it becomes something that is so in line and relevant to exactly what is happening in your community or in your nation. But that is basically what happens after you go back. The one that I'm talking about is what happens within a service. That is in the midst of worship, and as during the time, you know, as we're singing the song of uh, Still, and we're singing the chorus, you can come and the Lord can give you a melody right there and then that will accentuate what is happening. And um, He gives you a melody and you step out and you deliver it. And the members, you know, the church begins to get into a deeper level of worship. Now before I go into the actual, you know, um, Nuts and bolts of that. Let me give you some scriptures. Okay, some references. First Chronicles 25 verse 1. First Chronicles 25 verse 3. Okay, the scriptures are there. Uh, you can actually go back and read. And it says that as David was choosing the singers, it says to prophesy with their instruments. They were not just only going to sing songs, but they were supposed to prophesy. Prophesy through their songs. Prophesy through the instruments. Uh, 
1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. Similarly, in 2 Kings, Elisha was brought in and uh, he was supposed to meet with the king, King Ahab. And he wasn't keen on meeting him because he was not walking righteously. And he was totally not in the mood. He says, get me a minstrel. And as the minstrel started playing, he delivered the word. Okay? That was assisted by music. So music is able to push a melody or message further. Let me give you an example. You can say to your you know, girlfriend or a boyfriend, you may say, I love you, I love you, I love you. And you may be very sincere. But it is very different when you put it in the melody. And you start singing, and you you know, sing a little verse to your girlfriend and says, I love you, oh my beautiful one. I love you. And all the loose people come out and the girl melts. You know? <laughs> so, it, it, the idea is the same thing, but when it's delivered through a melody, it, it just moves a little bit beyond just common words. Alright? Um, the Bible just tells us about the songs of the Lord. Okay, songs of the Lord in Zephaniah 3 verse 17. The Bible says that God sings a song over His people and the people are being blessed. Uh, Ephesians 5 19 says, don't sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Psalms are basically the songs that we find in the hymns. Uh, hymns are the ones that we write about the, you know, the, the words of God and it's more archaic in its structure. But spiritual songs are basically spontaneous songs. Songs that are at the moment. Songs that were not thought of. Songs that were not deliberate. But in the midst whereby God is sweeping through the congregation, you get carried about the wave of the Spirit of God and you bring forth a spiritual and a spontaneous song. So let there be psalms, let there be hymns, and let there be spiritual songs. Oftentimes in churches, when it's a little bit you know, older in age, there is always a tussle. Okay, the older one will say you should sing more hymns, the younger one will say you should sing more you know, contemporary songs. And there is always a tension. But churches are beginning to understand that both can coexist together. But we often miss out the area of spiritual songs. And that is the spontaneous songs that God gives us. But it is there. Now some examples of spiritual songs, like Exodus 15 verse 20, well, no, uh, 1 to 21, whereby there was a great deliverance that took place. God opened up the Red Sea. The chariots of the Egyptian no warriors were all drowned. And uh, Moses sang out a song. And Miriam took the tambourine and she danced before the Lord. All this was very spontaneous. Uh, if you read in Judges chapter 5, verse 1 to 31, similarly, God gave a victory to Israel over the Midianites. And uh, Deborah was there as a leader. And she sang out a song in Judges chapter 5, verse 1 to 31. Now, just give you the verses so they can go back and you can make reference to them. But those are some examples of spiritual songs. Now, there are two levels of spiritual songs, basically. One level is a song that we sing unto the Lord. Uh, as uh, Pastor Brian Ranger was saying, sing a new song to the Lord. It was basically singing for the pleasure of God. You, you sing. It's not in your melody. It is not the song, not still, but it is a different melody. And in your own words, you sing unto the Lord. So that is one. Singing a song for the enjoyment of the Lord. And second one is that the spiritual song for the benefit and uplifting of the entire congregation. It is a song now that will be released and the people that are hearing it get encouraged. They get ministered. Their faith is being strengthened. Alright? Now so, under this, a song of the Lord as an encouragement to the people, there are five areas. It can it says, uh, more elaboration, a song of praise unto the Lord. It can be a song of the bridegroom over His people. Sometimes God would say over to us, and He says that, it tells us that you are special, you are loved, okay? um, you are dear to me, and I care for you. 
God can sing a song over to us. And for a person who is struggling with his identity, who is struggling with an area of weakness that has fallen many times over, or who is struggling over and over that uh, he's been doing something, he does not find a lot of breakthroughs and success. And when you release that song over the congregation, the person can feel encouraged. It is similar to spoken prophecy, except that it is sung. Okay? Um, the D is an expression of what God is saying and doing now. God is ministering something to you and to the church, and you are expressing it out. Or it can actually be a reflection of a heavenly song. That is number five. Now, I will give you, I will give you some examples afterwards. Okay? Recently, in our church service, uh, that was about probably about three or four weeks ago. We were preparing for a major rally in this century here, where the Canadian evangelist moves in signs and wonders. And uh, the church has been praying for about two months. You know, uh, they have been inviting friends. And the service, I believe, just before that crusade, uh, in, in the midst of the worship, there was a song that came go to the congregation. And it was a very simple song, but a song that was right at what the church needs to hear. Maybe I need to help of uh, one of our guitarists, Maybe, uh, brother in acoustic guitar. What's her name, brother? Yeah? Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Okay. So you give me a key of G. Yeah. It says in the midst of the congregate uh, worship, the Lord gave a song. And it sounded like this. Let it get ready. God is great, great, great. God is great, great, great. God is great, 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 so great. God is great, great, great. God is great, great, great. God is great, 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 so great. That was all that was there, all right, during the time. Uh, uh, maybe you can play it first. It's a very simple song, okay? Now, it's a song that the congregation, obviously, you know, whether you are, very educated or very, you know, you're just beginning your education, you will be able to remember the words. But see, we'll be praying for the power of God to come. We'll be praying for the miraculous to take place. And here, in the song, just before the service, the Lord gives to us and says, God is great. He's able to do that. And true enough, when the subsequent following week, when we had the three nights of meeting, indeed, the power of God was released wheelchairs, you know, and people sitting in wheelchairs, started walking, those who have uh, growths and uh, those who have pain in their bodies were healed instantaneously in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God is exalting Himself and telling that He is great. Trust me, things are going to happen. Okay, sing it with me. God is great, great, great. God is great, great, great. God is great, great, great. So great. God is great, great, great. God is great, great, great. God is great, great, great. So great. Now, you see, it may not mean much to you, except that it is okay. God is great, but you can understand the context whereby the song was released. It's the moment whereby the church has been praying for about two months, and God is saying to us, "He is great. Everything." Game is going to be done and he's going to make himself, you know, and reveal himself great. So, a spiritual song doesn't mean that it has to be a very slow melody. It can be a little bit syncopated like it is. Maybe we can ask a drummer on the basis just to give us a little bit rhythm. Because when we sang it that day, it was with a little bit, no, it was following a certain rift and a groove to it. And the congregation started clapping. In fact, I taught this song in um, two weeks ago in our missions team. Uh, trip over to India and I asked them uh, what does no, how do you say God is great in Tamil 
Alright, and they taught me, you know, the okay, the way they say the temple is Karta Periyave. Am I correct? Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Karta Periyave. And we sang the same song, the same group that is there. And um, the people enjoyed it. Okay? Let's try it. God is great, great, great. God is great, great, great. God is great, great, great. So great. God is great, great, great. God is great, great, great. God is great, great, great. So great. Come on, everybody, now. God is great, great, great. God is great, great, great. Big a peri of a big game is so great. Alright, ready one, two, go. Kata peri of a Kata peri of a Kata peri of a big a peri of a Yeah, do it now, come on. Kata peri of a Kata peri of a Kata peri of a big a peri of a Okay, thank you guys. Let's give it back. Within that setting, uh, um, we say they're, they're playing more of a country feel. Okay, they're more of a country feel. Uh, I don't know how they did it on that day, but it was, uh, so it was a different feel. But it's, it's alright, okay? Now, let me share with you how to sing a song of the Lord. Right? It's not just only to talk about it. Um, yeah, the power of a prophetic song. Let's do that. What does a prophetic song do? First of all, it brings an intense presence of the Lord. It brings an intense presence of God. When you have reached a certain level of praising God, huh? and uh, instead of repeating the song over and over and over again, the Lord gives you another melody with a similar message, and it enhances what has been built on before, and you release it. The people know that it is not part of the song because the words are not even there. Uh, the projectionist is uh, scrambling to listen to the words and type it in and so that the congregation is sing together. But it literally brings the people to the presence of God. You see, when something fresh is introduced in a service and which you have not planned for, the congregation will understand that God is saying something through the worship leader. He is hearing something. And when people know that the Lord is moving, they immediately respond to God. If it is the same song and you sing for already 10 minutes and the chord progression doesn't change and the melody goes round and round and round and you wonder, you look around, you know, whether everyone is still singing or they are dozing off already. Now similarly, what happened just now in the worship, in the song as we sing still, the musicians were not static in uh, the free time of worship. They were beginning very slow, they built it up, and it, well, there was a crescendo that came on, all right? there was a, a, no, a groove that came in there, and after that, Pastor Brian Ranger came over, when, when the worship died down, and the sound of the people, he says, let's just praise God you know, uh, with our voices. And they slowly built it up again. So it began, and it was a diff, no, it was a different uh, riff that they did, uh, and, uh, that pushed the worship further on. But if they just kept on with the chords of the same song with the same melody, then it's not only stagnates; it will dip. Anything that is sustained too long, it will fall gradually. So when you introduce something fresh, it will go up, and it pushes it to another level. The power of prophetic song, it increases the impact of the now word. It means God is saying something to the people and uh, you release a song that captures what God is saying and it impacts the individual. Now it can be a song that is delivered after the message. The pastor preached a message of faith and during the closing time, 
You know, as he asked for response, and the people responded, and before the music died down, it, you receive a song that will essentially the idea of faith. You capture that and you release that. You actually increase the impact of the now word, the spoken word. Okay, that's what happens. Uh, so, the prophetic song does that. Number three, obviously it lifts and refreshes the spirit of the people that are there in the congregation. When you hear that song and it speaks to you, you begin to be refreshed. Every time there's an increase of God's presence, there will also end up the outpouring of the refreshing of the Spirit of God. Okay? Now let's go to the nuts and bolts of it. How to sing a prophetic song? How do you get into it? First thing is that you can sing with one sustained chord alternating with the first and the third notes. It can be just a G. And it could be a very simple song. If you start a G, so more or less you're, 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 you're staying on a one chord and it's a very it, it's not very creative, but you can start doing that, right? Uh, the other thing is that you can choose a melody, a known chorus melody. And instead of singing the words for that song, you put in your own words. Create your own words of praise, create your own and or you can sing in tongues. Take for example the song, um, the one that we did just now. When the oceans rise and thunders roar. So instead of singing the melody, or, or sorry, instead of the words of the song, you can sing in tongues. Now this is to actually to spread your wings to get ready for a prophetic song. Oh, musicians, I need your help again. Okay? Yeah, if, if you can help us with that song. Uh, hi, uh, Miss Steel. And then um, I want you to sing in tongues, but uh, sing following the melody. Okay? Follow the melody and use the melody, but you sing in tongues. And after singing in tongues, I'm going to ask you to sing it out, the same melody, but with your own words. Okay, you're trying to spread your wings in that area.
So I want you to sing with your own words, but use the same melody. It's right. But you can you can have some words because sometimes it's so so locked in when the oceans rise and then you change you see the thunders roar and you, you change something. But at least you modify the words. You change it. Don't sing it word for word verbatim. Change it a little bit here and there. You can't find new words. But if you can totally sing a different word message, by all means do so. Okay? Let's try. We will sing in tongues first and then we move on to your own words.
with a 4-4 timing that is there, there's a certain chord progression, uh, and uh, you need to work within the rhythm. And you need to choose the right words. Okay? I, I would suggest to you that you would try to choose scriptures. Try to choose scriptures. Uh, in fact, because time does not permit, you know, um, actually I want to give the exercise of asking you to sing Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. A very familiar passage of scripture. You know, and you can try to spread your wings, use the same scripture and sing a melody unto it. Like, take for example, the, the verse says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. So you can sing it in a melody. Um, let me simply give you an example. Seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom and His righteousness. So you don't have to always sing, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So you can bring it, Seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom and His righteousness. Seek ye first, seek ye first His kingdom and His righteousness. Then all of these things, and then all of these things shall be added, added unto you. Something like that. So you can repeat words, you can repeat phrases in a prophetic song. But not only you have to have good words in it. So start with scripture melody, no, scripture. And four, uh, uh, you're going to have clarity. Uh, whether it be a prophetic song, especially a prophetic song, because you are making up the words as you go along. Uh, and uh, sometimes, you know, it doesn't come immediately then, then, but you try to be as clear as possible. But this goes on whether you're leading worship or you're singing a special. You must have words that are clear. Otherwise, people do not know what you are singing. And then, lastly, it says that it's your timing. Okay, fit in with the timing. Right. Um, let's move on. Okay, I, I will go through this. The structure of a prophetic song. Just, just click on, yeah. Next slide. Okay, guidelines for orderly and ordered moments. What are some guidelines that you need to do? Okay. The first thing is this, if you want to move strongly in this area, is actually to spend much time with God. You see, it is in the presence of God when you, when you start singing a new song to the Lord when nobody is hearing. God, I just want to sing this song to you. Right? In the midst of your worship. You sing it unto Him. You spend time in the presence of God. Then you'll be able to be carried along during the worship. Time. Number two is this, study your scriptures regularly. Okay, study your scriptures regularly. One common example is this. You know there is one scripture that is, uh, very people know the meaning of it. The Bible, Paul mentions it. One phrase, he says about the baptism of the dead. Uh, that there is one, okay, in, 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 the, in the epistle of, uh, that Paul wrote. There is one area about, he talks about the baptism of the dead. Not many people understand what it's actually about. So you don't sing us, don't, don't deliver a song. Which means there's just nobody knows about what's that meaning. Even though it's amazing. Go baptize the dead, go baptize the dead. Go, 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 go baptize the dead. Hey, baptize the dead. I mean, it may be a very funky song, you know. But people ask, what do you do when I baptize the dead? Hungry goes festival. <laughs> So you must know the scriptures. Uh, you must know the scriptures. And, and uh, you, you cannot sing a song, you know. I think there was a song that was uh, done by one of the singers uh, in the world. You can't use lyrics that says, I touch myself. You know? <laughs> you, you can't use it because it's not scripture. That goes, uh, those are worldly words. Uh, and, uh, you, so you need to know. When you sing the song, oh, I, I was moved. No, I'm not moved by a different spirit. <laughs> okay. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, obviously it says that sing and uh, speak clearly and loudly. Okay. Fourth thing is this, you don't have to use these and that's. King James Version is not necessary to be used in your prophetic song. 
to make it more spiritual. Okay? Now if you have these and thou, it's okay. They even in prophetic words. Huh? Five is this, if you are spreading your wings in prophetic songs, seek and request evaluation from your pastor, pastoral staff. This is how did it go? Then this is my first time doing it. Is it okay? Uh, was it the right timing? Uh, that I released the song. So you don't release a song whereby the pastor preaches a strong message and he asks the people to stand up, you know, and you're ready to go. And before he gives the altar call, you, you sing a song. It, it will interrupt his flow. Okay? Um, so the right time is about that. So ask evaluation from your pastor. Or your, you know, your, your cell group leader or your section area. Number six is this. Spread your prophetic wings in small groups. That means in your cell group, there and then try it. Right? Because it's kind of intimidating when it is in a large group and you nobody wants to make a fool out of themselves. Right? When everybody is, you know, coming well dressed and you know, there are a couple of hundred of people in the congregation and the first time they're trying to release a song. No, spread your wings in a small small group. Number seven is this while waiting, you have a melody. While waiting, it is good to begin to pray in tongues. Uh, you're waiting for the right time to release a song. Number eight is this. Listen to a key word or a key phrase. Your song must tell a message. What is it about? If it is trusting God, then it must flow in the area of trusting God. If it is faith, it must have the team faith. You don't sing a song that sounds a person, a preacher who preaches from Revelation, but not Genesis to Revelation. So many things, but you don't know what is actually the main no, heart of the sermon. So your song also must have a central uh, key word. Number eight is this, I'm sorry, number nine. Do not overload the people with lengthy and numerous prophecies. And which always says, you don't actually have to sing a, prof a song, a prophetic song every time. Also. So you don't have to drag it too long. The best one is that if you're spreading out your wings, it could be just a song that's, God is great, great, great. And you can actually get the congregation to sing along together with you. Right? Number 10, it says, be accustomed to hear God's voice. Hear God speaking to you first. If you've never heard God speak to you, then start from that place. Uh, God, uh, show me something. Let me get accustomed to your voice. Today is a brand new day. Show me something. That, if I do something on my own, just give me a check in my spirit and tell me something I did not plan. So you start hearing God's voice for yourself. The same thing with spoken prophecy. You don't go, you know, or... And you never heard God's voice for yourself and you just lay hands on your neighbor and you start prophesying, you know, oh, you're supposed to give, you know, your share your iPad with me. Brother, share everything, brother, share everything. God says, be my brother. Take care of me. <laughs> you, know, you really need to hear the message of God for yourself first of all. Okay? Right, uh, I just have five more minutes. Right, about that, five more minutes. I just tell you what are the things to avoid. Things to avoid. First of all, avoid impressing the congregation by singing higher, by singing louder. There's a tendency for us to go. Every singer, you know, you want to sing a little bit higher, a little bit louder. So don't, it's not a time to impress. There are two types of wrong prophecies. One is wrong ideas, another one is wrong timing. Okay. So in the midst of, like for example, um, what was the first song we all sang just now? The fast song. Holding Nothing Back. Okay, right. That, that's a new song to me. Holding Nothing Back. So let's say, for example, it's a series of fast songs. Clap, you know, people are rejoicing. Suddenly there's an atmosphere of celebration. But while the music dies down, you, you, it has a melody that comes into your mind. And, uh, because they go to a slow song and we hear that melody, you get a, you get a, a, a message. And uh, you release a word and a sort of song that says, The Lord is not happy with you. <laughs> because some of you have sinned and not tied this month. <laughs> you know, that's the wrong time because why the people will pray?
praising God, dancing, hallelujah, hallelujah, then when you, when you release a word like that. <laughs> it will look. And your pastor is going to come and preach after that, you know, he's going to heart going. Uh, so there is a time and place for it. And then sing the worship song. And it could be perhaps during the end of the worship and you know, uh, the pastor may be then leading on the preach something along those lines. They find it's appropriate. If it is not appropriate, then you can actually keep quiet. And say, God, I heard something, but I, don't, I did not know where to come in. Maybe it was not for that service. You heard something, pray about that. It could be the next service. So timing is important. One is wrong ideas, one is wrong timing. Okay? Things to avoid. Do not be proud. Everything must be based on love. Number four, do not be compelled to sing a prophetic song every time. Uh, if you eat too much durian, so so will be jala. Then, uh, come seasonal and you eat it, wow, it tastes good. No, but every day you see durian, no, you don't want to eat it also. Never fear failure. There's sometimes when you will stutter. Sometimes, you know, you just cannot find the right words. And uh, you're there in the service. Not that you want to, but it happens. But don't feel fear of failure. Number six, do not despise prophecies because they contain grammatical errors. You know how good our Malaysian English is. <laughs> huh? So, no. and you're trying to sing a song about the second coming of the Lord. It says, the Lord says he was coming. <laughs> Oh, he was coming. <laughs> and you know what the guy is trying to sing about, you know? <laughs> so, but there's nothing wrong. God is still saying he is coming, okay? But the vessel, you know, the English have problems on it. <laughs> Number seven, do not treat prophecies with inattentiveness when someone else is being used. And this has got to do with the element of pride. God has used me. Fantastic. Now someone, God is raising us someone. Like, hmm, not so good, now. Not <laughs> better and all that, huh? Then uh, just one last slide it says, do not judge the messenger, judge the message. Right? Judge the message. I know it's important for us to live lives of integrity. And some you may find that they are not so spiritual, but they can bring a word and you'll be astonished. Now why we don't encourage you to live a double, you know, um, kind of a life. But the person is really, he is young, he's, he's trying to grow the things that he's, you know, uh, he's struggling with, but he is authentic. He wants to, but he's not as spiritual as you are. He's not been here in the church, you know, for 10 years or 15 years. He's just been saved, you know, one year ago. He has issues, but he's growing, he's learning, he still struggles, and he gives a word. So don't judge the message because of the messenger. Listen to the, judge the message yourself. And try as fast as possible to keep a record of prophecies given. Try to keep a record of prophecies given. I have heard this, I think you have also heard this prophecy given in word. While we're worshiping, you know, the, the, the people will someone give that say, if my people shall humble themselves, you know, and turn from the wicked ways. Wow, everybody you now was so convicted. One month later, the same message comes. Three months later, the same person gives the same message. You know, six months later, same message comes. Or oh, no other message went <laughs> No, one year later, the same person gives the same message. You find that it has been overused to it. Huh? And uh, then people will not respond to it. What happens is that when someone else gives the same message, people will be a little bit distant, even to the new message. So no one has been given. Even that, as preachers, where we preach, what we preach, we got to a record. Lest we preach the same message in the new church, same church. Ah, never prepared. <laughs> <laughs> same message, what well, last year, but this year also preach the same message. Same jokes, about worse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I just pray with you? Allow me to pray with you, okay? You just stand to your feet. Father, we thank you for 
the great privilege that you've given to us to be worshippers of the living God. For many of us here, the Lord, you've given us the talent of music, in instruments, in songs. And I pray that by the Holy Spirit, you will lead them step by step, stir the prophetic wings that they have. Help them, dear God, to grow in this area so that they can be a voice to the people, a voice to encourage, a voice to bless, a voice to edify. Father, help them, dear Lord, as they juggle with this, a lot of timing, of melody, of rhythm, of clarity. But you will enable, Lord, a fresh generation of worshippers that will hear your voice and deliver it prophetically through a song. I commit them to you and I pray they will be such a blessing to the churches that we'll go back to. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you.